in China, they have the Ponga Hawk. Even in India, way back with the old Veena, which was very, very close to the heart, not to be confused with the modern day Veena, the olden day Veena was played very famously by Samudra Gupta, who was the second emperor of the Gupta Empire. And they have even found gold coins with Samudra Gupta playing this kind of harp, which is actually being played in Burma today as the song harp. And um, in Ireland, if a child, if a, if a boy was born blind in the Middle Ages, it was a given that he would be a harpist. And like this, there were many, many harpists who played in Ireland. And we say the world today is so connected. But way back then, when there were visually challenged harpists playing, and often playing for the king, there was a harpist in Sri Lanka who was visually challenged. And he played so well for the king that the king named the entire town after this blind harvest. So you see, there was globalization even happening back then. And um, while the harp eventually sort of died out because you needed to have those many notes to play those, to play, you needed to have those many strings to play so many notes. And you couldn't just keep adding and adding strings. And when composers started writing music which needed a lot of accidentals, let's say, the harp couldn't manage. So, Instruments like the violin, which were actually originating from the harp, the veena, the stuff, they all became way more popular than the harp where it originated from. Until somewhere around the Middle Ages and later, when Mary Antoinette, she was a very famous harpist, and when your queen, when your French queen, you bring in the French connection, yeah, isn't it? She was such a good harpist that the musicians, the ones making the harps in France said let's do something, let's see what we, should, we can do about this instrument, how we can make it more versatile. And so we had the error harp, which was a single action pedal harp. And then we have the double action pedal harp, which was invented in France, which is what I play. So that's a really big harp. I make the notes with my feet while I pluck with my hands. There are seven pedals for the seven notes of music. Like how many pedals does your car have? How many pedals Three. does your car have? Three. But on the pedal harp we have seven pedals. And each pedal goes in three notches. For flat, for that note, for natural, for that note, and for sharp. So because of the complexity of the pedals, we can make more notes than a grand piano. What's also very uh, interesting about the harp now, the pedal harp is I need all 47 strings when I play and I need all of them to stay in tune. On the lever harp, I need all my 38 strings, if it's a 38 string harp, and I need all of them to stay in tune. So let me get back to taking you to the different countries of the world. You know, with music you can sit in one place, you can travel to so many countries. So I took you right now to Ireland with the Irish gym. Let me take you to Spain, okay, where I'll play you a uh, song called Altia by Angelino Santigen. I need to take my viewers to the key of C major for the key. 